Okay, today I'm going to do a rule of thirds painting using a printmaking brayer. But before I do that, I want to troubleshoot a little bit with um, getting an even coat of paint on your brayer. So the first thing you want to make sure is just on a piece of paper or surface that this brayer is rolling smoothly. Sometimes paint if you don't clean it properly, it gets dried in there. And then when you go to roll, it just gets stuck in one spot. So these are both rolling just fine. Okay, then I'm gonna put down a regular acrylic. It's a little bit thicker. You can do it with fluid paint, but I think it's easier to start with a thicker paint. I put down a little more than a quarter teaspoon. I can just dip in here if I want. And then, okay, so that's splotchy, right? If you go to roll on your canvas, you're going to get a blob. So if you were a printmaker, you would want an even uh, distribution of paint on your brayer, right? So how do we do that? A little dip, and I'm just lightly rolling, 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 and then straight and then I go across rolling 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 and I kind of lift up at the end I it's just a light pressure when I was teaching elementary students they would get really like into it and push down hard it doesn't do anything uh, you don't need a lot of pressure so an even coating and then I can test this out on a piece of paper when we do our rule of thirds, it's going to get lighter and lighter. That's okay. Now there might be times you want to have that blob effect. Like if you wanted to create dots like that, right? Like that might be an interesting pattern, but I think initially it's important to know how to get an even coating of paint. So I'm going to go into my rule of thirds now painting and then during class we can we can do more with uh, I can review a little bit more if you need help with getting your paint evenly. Okay so I'm going to use this um, it's a transparent quinacridone nickel azo as my base coat for blocking out my thirds. And this is not open, so I'm going to mix some retarding agent in there to slow the drying time. Just putting kind of a, I don't know if you can see that, generous blob there. And then I'll mix it with my palette knife. And I'm not being fussy about cleaning my brayer right now. I'm just laying the groundwork. Okay, so again, and this um, is a little softer than that one, the paint. But again, I'm going to roll out back and forth right here. Okay, and then, oh, I meant to use my bigger brayer. Okay, so <laughs> let me switch. I'm gonna put this in a bucket of water to soak so the paint doesn't dry on it. Okay, so now I'm going to this bigger one. If you don't have a bigger brayer, that's okay. You're just gonna somehow have to figure out how to break your canvas up into thirds. So I have to re-ink each time. So back and forth. And I actually want the bands to fade out like that. You'll see why when I start painting. Okay, now I'm gonna go this way. 
So with the transparent paint, what's nice is as it goes over some of the bottom layers, you're going to get different transparencies, which will be, should be interesting in your painting. Okay, so now I've got my grid work. I have not decided yet if it's going to be a vertical or horizontal painting. Okay, I am going to use a charcoal pencil. I'm just loosely, you don't have to do this, but I am loosely marking out where those intersections are, just so you can see. You don't have to do that. Okay, so what I have below me is a, a bucket of water, and then here's my brayer. Um, it's soaking. I'm going to wipe off some of that paint with a damp rag before I go to my next color. I am primarily going to do an exploration of blues, and I bought all these new blue colors. This is an azurite blue. And I'm not, I'm just going to kind of go. I'm not going to be too fussy about over designing my piece. Okay, so I'm going to, now I tend to, with the brayer, tends to be very blocky. So I'm going to change it up a little bit, uh, make it more of a diamond shape, maybe. And as I roll, these paints will blend. So I've got one and two. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put my third one. Okay, I think it's gonna be a vertical piece. And all right. So I've got blues. And my lighter blue. Again, I don't get really fussy about this, like the colors are mixing here. I'm okay with that. Okay, so now there's so many different ways of approaching this, but I'm gonna block out most of that background. Leave a little bit showing through. Okay, now I'm going to switch to paintbrush. And what's nice at this stage, especially with the open, if there's a slow dry medium, I can take just a wet paintbrush and I can just use the top edge of that to um, open up the paint, uh, blend it more, or, and we'll be doing this in later class, doing. I call it erasing painting. I can do it with my brush or here I have a damp rag and I can go in there and manipulate the paint through erasing.
So I've got my rule of thirds and now I've got my structure and now I'm just, she'd tell you at the moment, I don't have a particular plan. I'm just playing with this and seeing what I get. I like that erasing a lot. We have not really ever done this in class. I really like it. Okay, now I'm looking at that and I think it's time to bring in maybe some darker blues. I've got Russian blue. an azurite, and then a manganese right here. Okay, if you don't have um, a brayer, you can paint with your palette knife too. Palette knife is great. You can, so I'm going kind of low 45 degree angle. So it's great. I could put in a big glob of paint, which is more opaque, right? I can add more pressure and I can scrape out. So it's really, it's very sculptural. I can scrape out, then if I don't like it, blob it back. I scrape across colors that are wet. There you'll see colors underneath, blending will go on. Okay, so I like how this blue mixed with the color underneath, it made kind of a celadon. So I'm gonna bring that lighter color in, mix some. Okay, then if I take my paintbrush and I get a big glob, no water, big glob, I could and hold it down low, 45 degree angle and lightly pull across, I'm going to get a thick glob of opaque paint or raised. abstract, but I'm seeing houses in there. Okay, and then I can scratch through with a stick or my palette knife or a chopstick. It's graffito. When this dries, if I drag more paint over it, I'll pick up on that texture. Okay, I think I'm going to to stop there unless there's any specific questions. So we did rule of thirds, gray or painting, three main objects with the, what was it? The azurite. Then I brought in the lighter blue techniques, impasto, graffito, palette knife, erasing. If you want to see anything else, let me know. Okay, so more.
scrofito. So scrofito is Italian. It just means scrive means to scratch. And it usually works best when you have, um, you know, like a thicker impasto paint. So I'm going to make more of this sort of muted celadon color over here. I'm going to mix a big glob. And just trying to figure out where to put it. Okay, so I put a big glob here, thick, right? So by doing the 45 degree angle, dragging across, laying down a big glob. I could use the tip of my um, palette knife and scratch across. Oftentimes I use the back of a paintbrush. So it could be very precise or it could be like that. And then when that dries, I can go across dry brush and I'll pick up all of that texture and add another layer of paint. Um, this scraping in with the palette, now it's graffito in a way, I'm revealing underpainting, right? Which gives the painting more depth and interest. Okay, one final lesson for the day. Um, all right, on a smaller canvas, just gonna roll out this open, what is this, Indian yellow. Okay, so I wanna make a little bit of a, I guess you could call it a stencil. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. Now I'm going to get a darker color in there. Hang on, wait a minute. Okay, I'm trying to mimic your painting, Sarah. There's Prussian, and I'm just going to let it mix. See what we get here. Okay, so I get a nice crisp edge, right? Now, where it gets confusing, what if I want to wipe this a little bit and make it lighter? I'm going to put this other half of my ripped paper, take my wet rag. or it could be um, a damp brush. Okay, then I can make some of this darker, higher contrast. Does that make sense what I'm doing? I'm trying to get your eye to go into that space with this crisp edge over here. As it dries, I could put my stencil back. Let's see, I could put my stencil back. Let me go over with a, a lighter color. Let's see if I've got a white here. Of course I don't. Can't find my white. I'm going to go with this uh, Titan Pale Green. Okay. 
And if I bring it over, then this will feel like it's behind. 